is matter around us pure. You can classify matter into pure and impure substances. Impure substances are often mixtures containing more than one substance. You can again classify pure substances into elements and compounds. Elements, as you know, contain only one substance and can be grouped as metals, non-metals, metalloids and noble gases. The slide shows examples of each of these categories. When two or more elements react with each other in definite ratios, you get compounds. Water, cooking salt, ammonia are some examples of compounds. On the other hand, you get mixtures when two or more elements just exist together. Remember, there's no chemical reaction between these elements in a mixture. When the mixture is uniform, like when you dissolve salt in water, you call it as a homogeneous mixture. But when it is not uniform, you can easily separate the components of a mixture. For example, in a mixture of sand and stones, you can pick out the stones easily. Such mixtures are called heterogeneous mixtures. The slide gives you some more examples for homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. Characteristics of a pure substance Pure substances are homogeneous. The converse is not true. All homogeneous substances are not pure substances. For example, a mixture of salt and water is homogeneous, but it is not a pure substance. There may be impurities in the salt or water. Pure substances generally have the same composition. For example, in water, hydrogen and oxygen are combined together in the ratio of 1 as to 8 by weight. Pure substances have some properties that do not change. For example, sodium carbonate always gives carbon dioxide when treated with dilute hydrochloric acid. This property never changes. So, it's a pure substance. Elements Elements are pure substances containing only one kind of atom. There may be more than one atom in an element. When there's more than one atom, it's called a molecule. Elements having one atom only are called monoatomic. For example, sodium and noble gases like neon and argon have only one atom. Some other elements like oxygen, nitrogen and chlorine have two atoms in their molecule and are called diatomic. When there are more than two atoms in an element molecule, it is called a polyatomic molecule. For example, ozone where there are three oxygen atoms or sulfur where there are eight sulfur atoms. Types of elements, metals and non-metals. There are 112 known elements, though there are reports that scientists have discovered more. Metals are monoatomic and all metals are solids, except mercury. Mercury is a heavy, silvery liquid at room temperature. Non-metals are mono or polyatomic. Non-metals have elements existing in solid, liquid or gaseous state at room temperature. Metalloids are monoatomic elements. Metalloids like arsenic, antimony and germanium 
have properties of metals and non-metals. Metalloids are semiconductors and can pass current when some impurity is added to them. Compounds All samples of a compound are identical in composition. For example, ferrous sulphide contains seven parts of iron combined with four parts of sulphur. Properties of a compound are different from those of constituent elements. For example, hydrogen and oxygen are gases. But water, which is made up of these elements, is a liquid. Unlike a mixture, you cannot easily separate the individual elements in a compound by physical processes. When a compound is formed, energy, generally heat energy, is absorbed or liberated. For example, when a carbon atom reacts with an oxygen molecule to form carbon dioxide, it liberates around 393.5 kilojoules of heat. Here are some typical compounds. A physical change. Dissolving sugar in water is a physical change because there is no new substance formed. This means that there is no chemical reaction between sugar and water you get a homogeneous sugar solution. On heating, sugar solution undergoes evaporation to give sugar. In this reverse process also, there is no chemical reaction between sugar and water.
Formation of a chemical compound A compound in its properties is entirely different from its constituent elements. Formation of a compound is a chemical change. For example, when you mix iron and sulfur without heating, a magnet still attracts the iron filings. This shows that iron and sulfur remain as separate entities and there is no chemical reaction between them. However, on heating, they undergo a chemical reaction and forms ferrous sulfide, on which the magnet has no effect. Differences between physical and chemical changes the table illustrates the differences between the physical and chemical changes. Here are common mixtures that we use daily. Difference between mixtures and compounds The differences between mixtures and compounds with reference to iron-sulfur mixture and compound of ferrous sulfide are tabulated here. 